harnessing the power of the wind. In this area where we're at, uh, of course being completely off-grid and solar-powered, um, here in East Tennessee in the, in the wintertime, it's not a lot of sun at times, and there, but there is a lot of wind. So we thought that we would get one of these little wind generators, wind turbines, to uh, offset the cost of fuel having to run the generator to charge our batteries. Rainy me. <laughs> This is a mount that I had a friend of mine um, build up for me for the windmill. This part here came with the windmill but we didn't have a, a mount to mount it to the pole. So he took a few things and he's a heck of a welder. As you can see how pretty the welds are. Um, and he put this thing together. This is an old, old craftsman socket. And then he put set screws on here and everything. So. Very easy to work on if we ever have to do maintenance and everything to it. So I'm gonna install it on top of the pole now. Go ahead and open this up and see what all we have in here and try to get started installing. Hardware, instructions, okay, there's our blades. I don't play those pictures. Like I'm not being funny, it's like those detailed pictures. Yeah. With the, you know, this looks like it could be complicated. This is the whole inside charge controller and the wind generator itself. So we won't worry about that right now. First thing we're going to have to do is wire this in. So 
So we can go ahead and get this mounted. Yeah, it's simple. These two go to the battery. These three come in from here. Okay. So these three wires right here. Run to these three wires right here. And then these two here run to the batteries here in here. Okay, okay so I can mount this up. I don't have no crimpers, so I'm just doing it this way. With a pair of pliers. It works just the same. Piece of metal in there. It touches on each end. You crimp it on that end, that end, it connects the wire. It's a butt, a butt connector. What do you do with those? Connect these to the <laughs> negative terminal on the battery and the positive terminal on the battery. Here and here on the bus floor. Next step here is to attach the blades to the hub, which is, I mean, it's fairly simple. We got little eight millimeter bolts. Attach to the lock nuts to the back. Get the It's a little 
little bigger than I thought it would be. Yeah, and the picture it looked a lot smaller than I expected, but when we got it, it's a little bigger than I think, than I thought. Legs are longer than I thought it was going to be. It's all stuck on there. Did you get it? It's the last one. See how I got this on? Yep. Bolt, a washer, a washer, and then one of the big nuts in that plastic bag. Yep. Make it work. You're probably free. I am cold, yeah. Why didn't you put a jacket on? No, I was just in a hurry. Thank you. Be still, don't you fall. <laughs> there it goes anyway. I wasn't talking about it. Don't step on the blades. Right. You've got nuts in there to create a spacer so the wires aren't crushed? Yeah. This ain't easy to do, I'm telling you. Got it in there. Now I'm It looks like a little half of an airplane. It's kind of cute. Now before all you electricians start telling me this is not a good way to do this, this is a temporary hookup. So I can see if it works. What are you going to have to change? I'll figure out a, different, a better way, a safer way to hook it up. I got to find me a ground wire to run to the ground rod over there, too. Okay. I may have to mount a box here to connect the wires inside the box or something. I'll figure it all out. Front part on there? Yeah, I'm gonna put it on there. That. Things I didn't consider, huh? I didn't think we've ever done this before. <laughs> it's gonna be trial and error, probably, to start with. Be nice to see how it helps, though. And the sun's not out and the wind's blowing. I know it's going to turn. All right, let me see the cap that goes on it. Thank you. There it is. 
is. See that? And most of the time, the wind's blowing 90 miles an hour. I know. <laughs> Glad it wasn't today, though, since I got to stand out here and make it a lot easier to put up. The install was easy. It was simple. The cost was less than $250. Um, so, you know, I'm thinking, we're thinking it's a, an affordable option to... Uh, Kind of harness the wind because we get a lot of it here in the winter time being up on the on this mountain and in the higher elevation so um i realize i don't have it very high in the ground but this is just a test so i can change this at any time but um we haven't really seen a lot of benefit from it yet um so I don't know, we've we got some ideas to move forward, but we'll talk about those in a minute. So we chose this location right here um, because of the, the elevation and there's not, we have a clear path for the wind to come right up this hill right here. And it, it blows 30, 40, 50 miles per hour sometimes up this hill. So um, once we get it all worked out, um, I'll probably double the height of this pole here. So that'll help it even collect more wind. So. As I said earlier, um, we have some ideas to try to improve the performance of, of the turbine. Um, with this charge controller that came with it, uh, simple to hook up, uh, three wires in, AC, has a rectifier inside it, turns it to DC here, you go to your batteries. but uh, you can't get a a reading on what it's putting out like you can on the on the solar here um, It tells how many watts are coming in it tells you how many volts you're bringing in it tells you your battery It tells you amps a lot of information on this one none on this one um, I've hooked a multimeter to it to see what it was doing uh, It didn't do a whole lot, but I have some ideas to buy another digital charge controller with a dump load on feature on it and a rectifier to turn the AC power to DC so I could hook it to the DC charge controller. So then we'll be able to get more information from, from what we're doing. So we'll, uh, we'll know what, how to better help you or help you make a decision on whether you should buy one of these or not. Um, at this point right now, uh, I would have to say I do not recommend spending your money on these so I mean if you're gonna go with wind power I would say look elsewhere maybe spend a little bit more money and and get a good one and like before Missouri wind and solar is always a good place to go so um, we'll but once it. we get those other parts we're gonna yes see how once, it works once we update. get the other parts in we'll update and let you know what kind of information we were able to gain from it so um, we'll be looking more into it as we go and we'll be able to give you more information and then we may change our recommendation we don't know yet so that's it thank and you and the other two parts um we're going to get aren't that expensive either right? no they're not they're less than twenty dollars a piece Did, i don't know if you mentioned that or not not yet i didn't no. less than twenty dollars a piece so we'll be able to hook them up and then be able to monitor like we can with the solar power okay. so we can monitor every bit of the solar but i mean this charge controller was eight hundred dollars so but it's well worth the money so we'll let you know to be continued <laughs>